about leadership where you're talking about uh, Kipruto Rapkirwa. Raila vows to repossess Ruto land. The grounds in a letter to Lands Minister and Anti-Corruption Agency Azimio claims the Deputy President irregularly acquired 2,500 acres in Taitata Veta and once titled deed held pending setting up of a commission of inquiry. And without just delving into just this, where do you draw the line between leadership of vendetta and social justice? Because even during the Deputy Presidential Debates conversation came up, of the first family and uh, issues around conflict of interest. And there was an admission by Rigadi that they will have a commission of inquiry to look into who got what at what point. Mm -hmm. Where do you draw the line between leadership of vendetta and social justice, not just focusing on these issues? I think it's a question of our moral bar. Yeah. When we talk of chapter six on issues of integrity, is that chapter six owned by the people? Has it been domesticated in the minds of the people, in the hearts of the people? Because, and the answer to me is no. No, why? Because the people don't care where you got whatever you have, as long as you are sharing with them. And therefore, when it comes to chapter six, there are many cases, and uh, the lawyer will confirm, or any other Kenyan, that there are many individuals with certain cases of integrity. But the people will say, no, we don't mind that. Give us our thief. We shall elect him or her. Now, when it comes to this, I, I think we need to separate issues such that an inquiry should not be targeting an individual or a certain family. It should be an inquiry that goes across the board, that uh, there is something that happened at a certain time, and therefore it needs an inquiry so that we are able either to exonerate the person or fix the issue. But it should not be an inquiry that you say, uh, the Honorable Association did this, and therefore I'm setting up an inquiry to convict him. Okay. It should be an inquiry to, to, so that the public benefits from the fact that if the Honorable Ruto has 2,500 acres in Taita Taveta, and he got them uh, without any um, hand -on activities, the inquiry will exonerate him. That okay, this inquiry is assisting us to know that he saw entrepreneurial in his undertakings that he was able to access this land on one, two, three grounds. But it should not be, let us do an inquiry to fix him. Likewise, when it comes to what Rigade was talking about during the interview, it should also be, if it is the first family as an issue, it should not be an inquiry to fix the first family. Because the moment you do that, you have started a Pandora's box that you cannot close. Remember, when Musei Kenyatta passed on, President Moi, when he took over for the 24 years, he was very particular that you don't touch the first family. Because every regime has its own supporters and its own individuals. And every regime, either by default or by design, may make a mistake. But the moment you start saying, I'm going after whoever has taken over from me, we are going to have a circus the way we have had in South Africa. When Mandela left, every other president has had to quit office before completion of the term. So the moment you investigate Uru this year, whoever takes over will also be investigated next year or before the end of his term or at the end of his term. Okay. I think as a country, we must ask ourselves, what is the moral bar? Number two, why don't we talk of bygones being bygones? Number three, an inquiry should not be to convict anybody. It should be to assist us understand the situation. Yeah, Bashir, what are your thoughts? Should bygones be bygones or should there be some level of justice? I think where we have uh, state resources, where we have public land, where we have breach of rights, I think each and every individual ought to be liable for that. We need to commence necessary action against individuals who, whether from state offices or in private, who may have benefited from the from the public coffers. And I think that is what our law expects. You know, if you are a serving president and you and you leave office, in the event you have accumulated, let's say, chunks of land, in the, um, um, I think there are very many ways of coming after you with respect to taking up, uh, bringing back what belongs to the public. But I think the issue is, this particular debate that we have had, uh, where we have individuals now trying to quote the names of uh, those who are in office, I think it may end up bringing up unnecessary uh, differences and political differences. That is not necessary at the moment. Tell Kenyans your agenda, 
in the event there is public land that has been grabbed, follow the rightful process. If there is land like uh, like the paper, like the letter that is being written, that was written by Zimio with respect to chunks of land that has been grabbed by the deputy president, there are clear ways. Challenge him in court, produce the evidence, and the courts will be able to revoke and revert that land to its rightful owners. The other party will equally, uh, the, uh, Ruto will equally have an opportunity to share with the court his evidences. And I think that is the ideal way. But uh, you know, politics is politics. This kind of letter is just trying to show Kenyans, look, the person you want to elect, you know, it plays to their PR in favor of, their, in, in favor of them. It's trying to show them that the person you want to elect is a labeled grabber. He has grabbed the people, uh, the land from the people, people from the coastal side. He may tomorrow grab your own land. And I think these are just accusations as far as this is concerned. The letter that was written, there is a clear reason as to why it has been shared and leaked to the public. The whole agenda of it is to share it with the with the media with a, with a view to maybe showing the people of Kenya do not elect person X. And you know, it is playing in their favor if they think so politically. But I think the rightful or the reasonable way is if there is public officer, it's not just even about the Honorable Ruto. If you have a sitting governor, if you have a sitting senator who may have grabbed your land, go to the court of law, challenge that. There are clear ways and that has happened before. Yeah. The lands, there are several lang, lands, parcels of land that belong to primary schools and hospitals that the courts of law have reverted back to the public. That has happened. Questions on uh, formation of commi commission of inquiry on this on, with respect to Kenya Kwanzaa. Yeah. What I admire about it is uh, there is an aspect of it revisiting historical injustices. I come from the marginalized part of Northeastern. I know what happens when you talk about massacres, the examples yeah. of Wagala, Wagala massacres. In our country, we have we have people who, are, who still have injuries with, that have been uh, inflicted upon them by police. Yeah. We have people who have suffered the 2007-2008 post-election violence. Those people to date, they may not have been uh, the interest may not have been cut off by the state. Yeah. We need to revisit all that, not to punish individuals, but to try and erase that particular wound with respect to forging a way forward. You know, it's about learning from the past. Yeah. It's about addressing that particular wound. Address a wound, it gets healed. Okay. We look at, we look, we look forward, and we still pass the good message that as a people, yeah. we are working towards a peaceful election without naming an individual without saying that you are going after a first family, second family, and what have you. Okay. If it is about the people's land, there are clear ways of protecting okay. the people's land. And so, Sian, I also want to bring your attention to page six of the Daily Nation, where DP Ruto is saying remove presidential immunity. In fact, he's saying there are countries that take their presidents to court because of corruption, and we must take our country to that level. And indeed, uh, th that is true. If yeah. Nobody is a god in any country. As individuals, we seek to serve in offices. And if we are culpable of any crime, then you should be jailed, walk, walk from state house to the jail. And we need to demystify all this. Kenya is not a monarchy, but back to the item yeah. uh, that, is, that is hot in, in, in daily nation and is made to be a splash. In fact, this one should not even have been published in a corner of a page in the media. This is just but propaganda letter. That is, that is hot air. It's neither here nor there. And it said, Raila vows to repossess Rutaland. But when you go down, it is Junet who has written a letter. No, Junet, no, the DP himself Junet, has also Junet spoken has about written, it and said the Junet, circumstances under which Junet the land has written a, a cheeky letter for political expediency. But let me remind you, there was in Dungu Land Commission, and we have that report in the country. And the truth is, there are many Kenyans who are landless. They will be dealt with separately. But with this one of Ruta, Criticals has not complained. And it's Criticals to complain, who is the owner of the land. And so, really, this is a week, is an item that really we should not even uh, invite ourselves to look at. But coming to the inquiry into the state capture, which is uh, one of the plans of Kenya Kwanzaa, and is what uh, Rigathi Kachagwa talked about. Rigathi Kachagwa never talked about an inquiry into the first family. He never said it. Uh, he said very clearly that as Kenya Kwanzaa, we shall inquire into state capture. And it is there in our plan. It is written, clear words, within 30 days, we shall establish a quasi judiciary com commission of inquiry into state capture so that we can have an equitable economy. Yeah. We can correct the historical problems of uh, cartels uh, running government and holding our economy hostage and, 
and perpetuating the entire state capture within, within the economy, which is good, is historically correct. We must do it so that we correct all the misgovernance and misrules around all these issues so that we can have an equitable economy that all the 48 million Kenyans can enjoy. That yeah. is a position of Kenya Kwanzaa, and it, Kenyans are going to vote for it. Okay. And, uh, and, and so we've not said we are going to inquire into mm -hmm. the family of Uru Kenyatta, we are yeah. going to inquire into the family of Moi, we are going to... No, 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 no. We cannot personalize. I think no, Gasha, Gashago, was just, Gashago was just a few words short of saying... Yeah, yeah. He did going, not say it, though. But he was just he a few outside. words short of saying that he yeah. will just do an inquiry into the first family. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that, that for all of us who listen to it, and it can be replayed, yeah. that was not said. That is are going to do an inquiry into an individual or the first family. Okay. The, the truth is, there will be an inquiry into state capture. And once that is done, it's done within the parameters of laws. Yeah. And nobody is going to be hurt. It's for the good of the country. Okay. So that we have an equitable economy. Okay. Uh, that is yeah. that is uh, that is that is good for all Kenyans. Okay. Yeah. I, and uh, and Kenya Kwanzaa Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. will continue promoting the rule of law okay. and constitutional order. All right. And we shall fight corruption through okay. institutions, yeah. not individuals. That is right. Kibri and yes. we we'll start with the and anybody who can be arrested, <laughs> including even a president. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, well, if it was uh, the Honourable Wilson Sosion as the leader, uh, being the leader of Kenya Kwanzaa, I would believe him because I know whatever he has done in the past, he has not contradicted himself. And when it was not convenient for him, and tenable to run the office that he was running, he said, I call it a day. But he cannot say of some of the individuals in that coalition, I know them better than you do, uh, from the days of YK92 up to now. The second issue is the lawyer was correcting you. I also listened to the end. And they were talking about certain levies that were waived of certain transactions within the bank. Yeah. And we know when we go deeper into that, it was almost a targeting a certain direction. Finally, and I think it's important, should they win? Because they seem to be so confident. I don't know where they are getting their votes. Should they win? The votes are with Kenyans. Well, they, yeah, we are. We seek the same votes. Yeah, the numbers are clear. <laughs> Let him finish. Which numbers? <laughs> I don't know man. where they cook these numbers. <laughs> because there is no new ground. Yeah. William has won that Huru did not have. <laughs> he actually has lost, even around the mountain. And there are more, more challenges. I'm now challenging you as a challenge. There are more challenges this time that they are not supporting William, that they supported him 2013 because of the ICC crisis. But finally on this issue, when an inquiry is set, it should be blindfolded. We should not be setting inquiries to target communities or individuals. Blindfolded in the sense that there are so many skeletons across the board, whether it is Kenya Kwanzaa or Asimio, that if we are to focus on an inquiry, we must also say, don't say they are coming for me. Let us allow it blindfolded okay. to unearth the negative things that have happened in our society. Okay, so see you in one minute, closing remarks. Yeah, I, I think uh, we are now getting to the penultimate point of taking decisions. And Kenyans uh, are, are now almost uh, fully decided. And I would like to urge Kenyans, let us continue focusing on the issues that uh, we are selling within our manifestos. And I want to assure Kenyans that Kenya Kwanzaa has not vacated the bottom up. We are focused on the bottom up uh, economic model. And uh, we are going to inject resources and focus on number one to ensure that uh, we create jobs for the youth of this country by putting resources in agro-processing, manufacturing, value addition, and we have mapped out the specific programs, the fundings, yeah. and the timelines. We shall protect the micro, small, medium enterprises. <coughs> we shall protect our farmers. Right from day one, we shall hit the ground uh, running, and uh, the healthcare system in this country shall be one of the best. Okay. And, and so Kenyans, uh, uh, we urge you to continue supporting us and vote for us on the 9th of August. Okay. And uh, we assure you <laughs> that we will deliver on our Okay, plan. Bashir? I think for us as a country, we have independent institutions uh, that are all provided for under our laws, 
Uh, it's about giving ourselves a leadership that will respect the independence of those institutions. We have the Office of the DPP, we have the Judiciary, we have the National Police Service, Com National Police Service Commission, we have the National Police Service, and what have you. We have the IPOA. You know, we have good institutions. We just need leadership that will respect those, those institutions. We do not need any interference from the top person with those institutions, so that as Kenyans we will end up having faith in those institutions. And, and my call is, my clarion call to Kenyans is that again, on the in, in about 18 days, we shall have an opportunity to elect somebody who, let us elect someone who, who will give those institutions the necessary respect and support. Okay. And I think, uh, uh, lastly, before I forget, I wish to congratulate the nine judges who were appointed the other day to the, I uh, sorry, the seven Court of Appeal judges, the new ones, brilliant minds who we, we hope and believe that we'll have, uh, that they will contribute to the growing legal jurisprudence in our country. And I think we also appreciate the synergy and the relationship that uh, the judiciary, without interfering with, the, with, the, with its work as a judiciary, yeah. uh, that it's trying to demonstrate that it can work with the executive. And I think going forward, yeah. we, are, we are looking forward to a fruitful election as a country. All right. Thank you all for taking part in this. Honorable Wilson Sosion, nominated member of parliament, Kipruta Rabkiru, a former agriculture minister, and Suleiman Bashir, advocate of the High Court. Do we have some time for quick feedback or do we close it at that point? Let's bring it up real quick as we wind up on this. Bobo Tino Wino says, with all these dramas and sagas, is coming against the IBC. I guess someone somewhere is trying to sabotage these coming elections, okay? Let's see. Lawrence Kiyoko says, let the panelists hit the nail on the head. The problem we have is handshake. We don't have an opposition. We should thank DP for criticizing the government is in. Okay. Angel Nazaro says, judiciary should apply some common sense when making judgments that can forestall the country, including Mr. Kigame's name in the presidential ballot, can't be attainable by now, okay? Chalo Woodrow, he says, all the civil servants, not only teachers, need pay rise to deal with the high cost of living. Salaries should be reviewed upwards of civil servants, earning salaries below 50,000. And, all right, he continues to say, the issue of land is not easy to deal with because everyone is involved in a mix. Everyone in, has grabbed land in one way or the other, and others are waiting for opportunities to grab land. Which hunting should be stopped on land issues? Okay. And that's where we leave it for now. Cooking Tips is coming up next with Willis Raburu Bazu. All right, bye for now.